Hello everyone, welcome to Quantum Guruji. So today in this video we are going to see how to do the analysis of an uh, TDDFT output file. Uh, in the last video I have told you how to do the calculation for a TDDFT. Okay, so without getting any delay, let's get started. So this is the output file for uh, TDDFT. And this is the input and this is the checkpoint file. So what we'll do is we'll open this in some text reader. Here I'm using Notepad++. Okay, so uh, these things are the, you know, the generations of your uh, Gaussian. And then this is the citation for Gaussian. You can start with the keywords and the uh, information about the checkpoint file and the memory processor and all. And going below. So let me tell you one more thing here. I have used uh, B3lib. Okay. So generally B3lib is not preferred for TDDFT calculation okay? because long range correction and all is not taken care in this B3lib. So either you can go for some uh, long range correct, corrected uh, DFT like MO, LC, MO6, 2X or uh, even you can start with CAM B3lib. Okay. So these are the you know basic uh, level uh, functional that you can at least start with. So next we'll go for uh, the you know the major thing that we have to look upon in the output file. First go down. So these are the details about your frequency and all. Uh, go slightly up. So here things are converged and just above the frequencies will start right. So, these are the thermodynamic properties at down, you have to go slightly up. So you need to go up at the level when your molecule is optimized and the same point you will have to check for all the other properties. Just slightly going up. Yeah, so this is the place where your file was. If you see your uh, file, okay. So this is the place your geometry optimization is over, and the uh, you know frequency calculation and the TDDFT calculation has started. So for this calculation, just go down here, okay, MOS, and then here. So here, if you see uh, generating gas from checkpoint file densities, convergence, and uh, so this is the excited state from single matrix, okay. So here if you see, so you have, these are the excited state transition magnetic dipole velocities. So in this case, this is the electric dipole moment and this is the transition velocity, transition magnetic moment and other things and slightly going down you will see the excitation energies and the oscillator strength. So in the calculation here you can see there are the six excited states okay. So why we have like if you see the keyword section I have given just go to the keyword section where I have given. So here I have given six excited states that's the reason it has calculated. Uh, six singlet excited states. Okay, so I have given the singlet excited state calculation I am doing here. If it is triplet, I will go for triplet here. Fine. Now go down and open that. Okay, so it's here. So the first excited state, if you see, it has a singlet B1G. This this is the you know multiplicity of your excitation. And this is the corresponding uh, orbital, you know, um, irreducible representation uh, and the symmetry of that, you know, MO. So this is the your energy of excitation. That is also known as EST. The, okay, and this is your emission wavelength, and this is your oscillator frequency. Okay, simply uh, sing, uh, like uh, similarly here. These are the 51 orbital and 56 orbital. So the uh, electrons from 51 orbital is gone to the 56 and it has a contribution of 0.1 uh, 
and orbital uh, electron from orbital 54 to 55 is having maximum contribution. So what is this orbitals? If you see the output file, open this and then see the MOs. So we'll look into it. Okay, here we see that uh, these are the orbital numbers. Okay, so 54 is what homo, and 55 is lumo, and these are the you know uh, symmetry of that orbital, the irreducible representation for that, B3g and B2g. This is homo and lumo. 54 is your homo. So in the output file, you see the 54 to 55 transition is maximum. So homo to lumo electron transition is maximum here. But at the same time, if you see the oscillator frequency, which is zero. So mainly what you have to look for is the where the oscillator frequency is high. So in all of the cases, this has the highest oscillator frequency. Oscillator frequency is nothing, that is the absorption. So whenever you are uh, looking for the uh, absorption spectra, right? So you see the absorbance. So this talks or it indirectly tells you about the absorption. Wherever it has a maximum oscillator strength means the absorption is maximum. So in this case, if you see, out of all six excitations, it has maximum oscillation uh, uh, strength. And which is at lambda 3 uh, means that wavelength is 344. Means if you see the uh, UV absorption spectra, the lambda max will be around 344. Okay. And this is the corresponding delta EST, the energy and wavelength of emission. And this is the singlet B to U. So this excitation corresponds to two, you know, uh, uh, 50 to 55 and 52 to 56. So what is this 55 to 56? If you see, okay. So here you are having 50 to 55, right? So 50 is this one, and 55 is Lumo. So this is Homo minus 4 to Lumo, and next is what? 54 to 56, 54 to 56, homo to lumo plus 1. So there are the two transitions possible here. And the highest is from this, lumo minus, uh, the homo minus 4 to lumo. That is the contributing mode. So if you see the uh, output file and go for UV absorption spectra, UV visible spectra here. So here I told you that the oscillator frequency is highest here and that will correspond to your lambda max. So you see this is the lambda max here, right? I will make it a little bigger. So this is the lambda max and this is, this frequency is at uh, 344 and here you see this is the singlet excited state, the lambda max is maximum, which correspond to your, you know, absorption. So that has maximum absorption. And other than this, it has a, a one more, you know, excitation. I'll show you here with MOS intact, it will be more, you know, clearly visible to you. I will make it a little bigger. Okay, fine. So in the first case, uh, in this, uh, you are having a singlet B to U, right? So if you see here, the frequent, uh, this singlet B to U, this will singlet, this is B to U, that frequency is not so, this is slightly above, okay? And then you are having a singlet B3G, that is here, B3G. So similarly, all excitations you can see here, and since other is zero, so you see it is minimum, right, everywhere. But singlet, this uh, excitation is high. So similarly, you can see all, all, all those excitations and corresponding oscillator frequency. And the, based on that, you can explain your, you know, UV visible spectrum and also the uh, uh, energies. So again, I will repeat, this is your uh, singlet excited state with 
corresponding irreducible representation of that orbital that is B1g and this is the energy that is the delta st and this is your emission wavelength and this is your oscillator frequency okay and here if you see that is the total energy that td td heterophob by td dft okay so these are the ways to analyze your uh, td dft output file and these are the uh, you know, parameters you will get from these calculations and other than that you can check for you know that uh, magnetic dipole moment electrical dipole moment all those things are below right uh, just above here these are you know the uh, for uh, methods for that okay other than that if you have any doubt pertaining to the steady dft calculation and the output file analysis uh, you can put your comments in the comment section thank you for watching the video